Hello, my name is David Schindler from Switzerland. Well, actually from the uh, University of Fribourg. And I'm going to talk about the uh, subclasses of split B1 EPG graph. This is joint work with Zakir Deniz from Duce University in Turkey, Simon Nivelle from ENS Paris, and Bernard Ries, my colleague at University of Fribourg. Let me first introduce the, the basic concept. So I guess um, you know the basic definitions about graphs. Let me start with interval graphs, which I think maybe most of you know. An interval graph, you have a set of intervals and you associate a graph, each vertex is an interval, and two vertices are adjacent if and only if the corresponding intervals intersect. So A and F here, I, since the intervals intersect, A and F are adjacent. So these are interval graphs and we know pretty much everything about them. Now a generalization we are interested in, the, in here is the class of EPG graphs, so they, are, they were defined by Gollum Beek in 2009. So basically it's the same, uh, but uh, instead of intervals you have a path on a grid. And two paths on a grid are said to be intersecting if they share an edge, a grid edge. And, then they, and they're not intersecting if they only share a, a grid point, a, a, a vertex in a grid. Okay. For instance here, V4 and V5, they're adjacent because their corresponding paths share an edge. Here is this one. So these are EPG graphs. Actually, it turns out that every graph admits an EPG representation, so we need to make some restrictions to, to make the problem more interesting. Let me define a band as a 90 degrees turn in a, in a given path. Now with this definition, BK EPG graphs are the class of graphs so which admit a representation where each Pass has at most k bands. For instance, here this graph is a before EPG graph because it admits a representation where each vertex is represented by a path. Each path has at most k bands, and as before, uh, two vertices are adjacent if the corresponding paths share a grid edge. Several questions that could be of interest when we're talking about BK EPG graphs, and in particular for us, uh, the question of the complexity of determining, determining whether a given graph is in BK EPG. And uh, actually, uh, of course, for B0 EPG, so B0 EPG is exactly the class of interval graphs, and we know that for interval graphs, this is easy. But for K equals 1 and 2, it has been proven NP complete in 2016, and for K is at least 3, it's open. And the second question is the: Is it possible to characterize it of, uh, with a set of forbidden new subclass? Of course, it's possible. But what is the characterization? Um, for given k, what is the set of forbidden new subgraphs? So this, for this question, not much is known. It, it turns out it's most likely quite difficult because for even for B0 EPG graphs, so for interval graphs, if you look at this characterization, it was uh, obtained in 1962 by Lecker, Kerker, and Bolan. And as you can see, uh, there's a an infinite list of uh, forbidden used subgraphs. So you have three different families. So one of them is the cycles of lengths at least four, but two of them are non very standard. So you have an infinite list of forbidden used subgraphs. So it's likely that for B1 EPG the same happens. So B1 EPG graphs are defined in a more complex way, so it's likely that there are even more uh, families of forbidden new subgraphs for B1 EPG. So we can restrict attention to subclasses of B1 EPG. Now, there's this preliminary result by Godum et al. in the 2009 paper, they showed that uh, in a B1 EPG representation of a graph, every click must be represented either by a claw click or by an edge click. There's no other possibility to represent a click in a B1 EPG representation. Now, how can we further restrict uh, to subclasses of B1 EPG graph? A path with 
exactly one band can only have these four orientations. So we have only four possible shapes for B1 path. Now we define the class of graphs which admits a representation only with such L's, as uh, we notice it by here with brackets. And uh, it's not difficult to see that uh, this class of graph is exactly the same as the class of graphs that you obtain if you restrict to only this shape. Okay, just take this representation and rotate it by 90 degrees. Okay, to obtain this representation. The same for the other two. So if you restrict to only one shape, you have only one class of graph. If you restrict to two shapes, similar arguments show you that you have these two classes of graphs. And you, if you restrict to exactly three shapes, you have only one class of graph. So let's focus on these classes of graphs. First, this result by Karen et al. Uh, in 2016, they showed actually that uh, this ID membership in each of these classes is NP-complete. So we knew it was already in NP-complete in B1 EPG, and now we know that in any of these classes it's NP-complete. So we are still in difficult cases, but uh, what if we restrict to split graphs? First in interval graphs, if we restrict interval graphs to split graphs, so split interval graphs, first look at the, this list of forbidden new subgraphs for, for interval graphs. Uh, most of them are, are not split graphs. So if we restrict to the class of split graphs, only two forbidden subgraphs uh, remain these two. And of course, for the whole class, you need also to, to forbid um, C4, C5, and 2K2, the, the minimal forbidden use of graphs for the class of speed graphs. Now, so the, the situation is way simpler if we restrict to split graphs. So maybe the situation is the same with um, the L-shaped graph. So the, um, our goal next would be to characterize, to, to study the class of split L-shaped graphs. And in the sequel, um, this notation, so with the bracket and the little s, this will indicate that we are restricting to split graph. We need these two definitions, which are from the paper from Cameron et al. 2016. Uh, an s bool within a split graph with a given split partition, ks. An s bool is a bool, so a bool is this graph, and it's an s bool if the stable vertices are these three, so these three vertices are in the stable part of this partition, and uh, these two vertices are in the click part. Because in a split partition of, an S of a bool, in general, this vertex could be in the click. So if in, in our partition this vertex is in the stable set, we call it an S bool. A gem is a we need also this definition, but as Jim is as usual, uh, this is this graph, and um, if you want to see the, the split partition of a gem, it's always the same, there's no choice. These three vertices are in the click, and these two are in the stable set. So we don't need to define it as a gem. It's just a gem. Now we have this property of split graph. If we know that a split graph is in L, in this class of graph, it necessarily has a representation of this form. Basically, look at the vertices in the clique. The clique has to be an edge clique because you cannot do a claw clique with only L's. So here you have uh, this vertical edge clique here. And now the path corresponding to the clique have to be in this, in this uh, position in the representation. Now the path uh, above the base here, which is the edge clique, is called the crown. The, bar, the part below is the trunk, and here we have this part is called the, the branches. Now, if you look at the vertices in the, in the stable set, the corresponding path can either be on the uh, can be on the crown, like here. They can be on the trunk, like this one, or they can be located on the branches. Now, if you consider a nest bool as an induced subgraph of G, then necessarily some of its S vertices have to be on the trunk or the crown. They cannot be all on the branches. This is not diff very difficult to see. And I'll, if you have a gem, this is even more restrictive, then exactly one, not zero, not two, exactly one vertex of the gem 
must be on the crown. Back in 2017, and based on that representation, we could obtain a necessary and sufficient condition for a speed graph to be L-shaped. Basically, it's that um, you can find two subsets of the stable part of the split graph, S1 and S2, verifying these three conditions. The first one is that each SI must be composed of pairwise comparable vertices, which means that uh, in each SI you can uh, order the vertices in such a way that they have um, nested neighborhoods. And conditions B and C are basically what we just uh, saw on last slide. This is a necessary and sufficient condition, it's a characterization, but it's not a characterization in terms of forbidden use subgraph. But at least it shows us that the gems and s bulls play a central role in the study of um, split L-shaped graphs. Now, back in the 2016 paper by Cameron et al., they proposed a conjecture for split L-shaped graph. They actually proposed that uh, the list of forbidden use subgraphs is uh, this list here of nine graphs. And actually this conjecture was what motivated our work. And um, so back in 2017, we could actually prove that it is actually false. We found another forbidden use subgraph, it's this one. And you can see that it does not contain any of these graphs as a new subgraph. And it's not, it's a speed graph, but it's not in L shape. Why is it not in L shape? Well, let me just uh, show you. Um, if you define here uh, an auxiliary graph for each uh, with what vertex set here, the white vertices, the vertices in S, and create an edge if these two vertices are, since these two vertices are both in a gem. And here these two, are, these two vertices are not both in a gem, so we do not uh, link them. So we do that for every pair of vertices. So these two are adjacent, they share a gem, these two share a gem, these two share a gem, and also uh, these two share a gem. Now look at this red graph. It's a cycle on five vertices. And now remember the condition for the gems, they should have exactly, each gem should have exactly one vertex in the crown. So it's not possible that in this cycle on five vertices, every gem has exactly one vertex in the crown. It would be the same as saying that a cycle on five, on five vertices is bipartite. So this is not the case. So this is another example, this is another forbidden use subgraph, which, has, which was not in the previous list, so the conjecture was wrong. But then we could show, and this is in our current paper in this version of Latin, um, that actually there is an infinite family of uh, forbidden used subgraph, and they are of this form here. So this is a split graph, and it's a forbidden used subgraph. Uh, I mean, you have uh, it's uh, parameterized by k here, and for each k, the the obtained graph is uh, it's a forbidden induced subgraph for split graphs. So basically, how to prove it? Well, this is not in L shape, and you you can prove it with our characterization. And if we remove any of the vertices here, we obtain a graph in L shape, which proves it. What are the consequences of this? Well, first of all, now we can discard the recognition algorithm consisting in brute force search of uh, all graphs in the forbidden use of graph list. But of course, it doesn't. Uh, mean that uh, no polynomial recognition algorithm exists, like in interval graphs, uh, there's an infinite uh, family of forbidden use of graph, but you, you can recognize them in polynomial time. Although uh, a complete characterization by a, a, a family of forbidden use of subgraph is still missing. We, we, we found a family, but it's not exhaustive. The, there may be other. Now, based on the fact that s bool and gems play important role in the characterization of L-shaped speed graphs, we ask ourselves what happens if we restrict to speed graphs not containing any s bool And we could obtain this uh, set of uh, equalities and inclusions that uh, if you restrict only to L-shapes, then it's strictly included to the case when, where we have these two shapes. And this class is exactly the same as B1EPG, actually. 
So we have only two possible cases if we restrict to graphs without s bulls and a graph which is in this class and not in this one, that's this one. So we know that it's in the set of uh, forbidden new subgraphs um, already here. And why is it not in, is it allowed in this class? Well, here we have a, um, a, a representation using only these kind of shapes. And we could obtain the, the forbidden new subgraph characterization for this class. I mean, they are all the same. Here, it was already obtained in Cameron et al. And we do the same for gem, uh, free split graphs. We obtain this uh, character is, uh, I mean, this set of inclusions. So we show that uh, these two classes are equivalent. These two classes are equivalent. These three classes, and they are the same as B1EPG for split graphs. And here we have a, a strict inclusion here. And here, for illustration, there's a graph which is in that class, but not in that one. So here again, it's not in that one because it's also a forbidden use subgraph here. Or oh, yeah, here. And it's in this class, and here you have a representation using only this kind of shapes. I mean, here it's rotated, but it's, it's the same. And for this class, I mean, for both, we obtained a, a complete characterization in terms of forbidden use subgraph. So now to the conclusion. So we studied here subclasses of uh, split B1 EPG graphs. And basically these three points are our new results uh, in the Latin paper. So this point is about uh, the first um, infinite family of forbidden induced subgraphs for split, uh, split L-shaped graphs. <clears throat> and here these two points are basically the, the last two slides that we just saw. And <clears throat> what are the, the remaining open questions? Well, first of all, we still don't, do not have a polynomial time recognition algorithm for split L shape. We have a characterization, but we cannot use it to derive a polynomial time algorithm. So maybe this, this would be the, the next step. Here, this is um, settled. We know now that there's an infinite family of homogeneous subgraphs. We are not sure. And <clears throat> maybe, um, is there a, since although we have an infinite family, is there a simple description of, of this family of forbidden induced subgraph? So these, these are the, the most important open questions. So that's it for my talk. And thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for the talk. It's good that you send us a backup video. Um, I don't think we'll have more time for questions. Maybe one, a quick one, if somebody helped. Uh, actually, I do have a question. Can you all hear me? Yes, yes. So, I guess David uh, can come to the podium so he can help you. David, can you? Okay, he's coming. Okay. Uh, so it's, now it's, a really, it's a really quick question. See, this paper deals with intersection graphs. Yes. And I work with intersection by graphs. So it's basically like you take the idea of an intersection model say arcs on a circle, intervals on a number line, or something like that. Mm -hmm. And you basically, instead of having one family of elements that you calculate the intersection graph of, you have basically two families of elements and only the adjacency between those families count. So the graphs are always by partite. So say interval bigraphs, circular arc bigraphs, stuff like that. So uh, is there any result pertaining to EPG bigraphs? Like, you know, two families of paths on the grid with only adjacency between the families counting, something like that? Well, not to my knowledge. Um, for me, so the, bi the biograph uh, definition that you gave me, uh, it's, new to, it's new for me, so. Oh, I see. I'm not, uh, I'm not aware of any related results. But uh, maybe, oh, okay. That'll be in the, in the lobby in the next, uh, for everybody, I'm in the lobby in the, after the next talk. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, thank you for calling that. We you can ask David more questions after the the next talk, which will be our last one from this session. So again, David, thank you very much.